Sometimes I wanna take it from a little to a lot, and I'm spinning in a circle like a dizzy little top. And I... Hi, my name's Daddy. And if you haven't noticed, I'm a farmer. Now my base is farmed, and I've wanted to do a video that is something that I wanted to do for a long time. Actually, I've seen lots of guides out there on how to farm, but I haven't seen many on how to avoid being looted, so how to preserve your resources, or at least minimise your losses. Basically, to avoid meeting somebody like me. So. I'm going to give you five top tips plus a bonus. Coming in at number one, it's always a balance between risk and reward. And I asked you guys where you're finding the loot in a previous video. And I wanted to balance that with where I think you can protect yourselves. So the balance of risk reward really means where you can be, where you have least likelihood of getting attacked, but you can gain most benefit. So Town Hall 6 and below really need to be below a thousand trophies. You don't need dark, dark elixir, so it's just gold, golden elixir that you're looking for. Town Hall 7, stay below 1k unless you need Dark Elixir to go up, then you should go up 1200, but you should really be only going up there once you're strong enough to protect yourself. Town Hall 8, I wouldn't go beyond 1600 cups. Town Hall 9, 1400 to 1800 if you're not maxed, 2200 top end. And Town Hall 10, really it's entirely up to you. But remember, it's all about experimentation. The loot, the loot moves around, so you have to stalk it. Stalk it like a lion stalks a gazelle on the, on the prairies. I'd love to know your thoughts in the comments about these levels. Coming in at number two is put out your town hall to get a cheap shield for a thousand gold and a thousand elixir. Now this isn't for everybody. Your clan might want you to cut push, but I think probably on balance it's good advice to give. So there we go, save 600,000 resources. You can get those cuts back really quick if you check out my raiding videos. Coming in at number three is separate out your resources. I wanted to show you an example of a base that hasn't separated out their resources particularly well. They've got their gold, uh, right in the center there and it's just going to take a couple of wall breakers just to pop through to help me loot all that gold also the mortar of course is on right close to the edge which is a really bad place to put one so in go the wall breakers and then I've got a path right to the center and because of the way the AI works my troops are going to go right in there so I'm going to pop my barbarians and archers in there pop down a heal spell because there's quite a lot of splash going on I want that elixir as well so the gold was in one section, and elixir effectively is in another that's really close. Now it's very hard to make good base at Town Hall 7 because of the lack of walls and defences, but still, separating them out would be a really, really good idea. And I'm just going to finish off that raid with a few barbarians and a few archers. Okay, so. Really, when you're designing a base, and this is not a base design tutorial, you need to put your elixir and your gold as far apart as possible. Think of it from an idea of an attacker. Make them make a choice which direction they're going to be attacking you from. And if they're going to attack you from that direction, then, well, make sure that not all of your resources are in one place. Generally, the dark elixir goes in the center. Unless you haven't got very much. Okay, coming at number four, use walls effectively. I wanted to give you an example of very good wall use. Now this guy here, Sweet59, has put their golden elixir separated out, which is very good, but also they've got these pockets of walls, which means that by the time I get through into the, uh, into the resources, most of my troops are gone. So there you go, a good example there. So I'm really struggling, certainly struggling to get the, uh, the elixir, but I'm struggling to get the gold. Okay, so this is how I would use the walls effectively. Again, this is not a base design uh, video. This just shows you, let's keep these small pockets of maybe three, uh, three buildings uh, at a time so that they're gonna have to keep breaking through those pockets of walls to get in. At Town Hall 8 and Town Hall 7 it's, and below, it's not that easy because you've got, you haven't got very many walls. But if you check out my base design videos, they are linked in the description. I'm going to show you some really good base designs for for all base levels, really. So yeah, I mean, this this, this principle of separation and segregation doesn't really matter if you're a cup chaser or a, or a, a you know you're protecting your resources. The main thing is you're slowing down the attacker on a ground attack. And I pop the uh, pop the mortar in there. Having a mortar in a triangle because there's three of them is a good idea as well. There we go. Trying to avoid uh, cross junctions as much as possible in the walls. Okay, coming at number five is position defences effectively. So I wanted to share with you the way that I 
position in my defence, and particularly the most important defensive structure that you have is your clan castle. That's why it's important to be a member of a good clan. Now make it unlurable if you can. You see, he's attacking. He's attacking my uh, side there, and the clan castle hasn't even opened yet because my defences are taking care of those giants. It's not a problem at all. But if you think about it, all the power of the minions or the archers or the uh, the wizards that are in your clan castle are available to you on the main wave of attack because he hasn't lured them out successfully and zapped them. It's very difficult to zap uh, clan castle troops if it's from an unlurable clan castle because they spread out wherever your troops are. And out come the uh, minions and the archers storming out and uh, well there's his minions gone basically. So clan castle effect, uh, use it effectively because it's your strongest defense. And then just take a look around your base. You need overlapping defenses if you possibly can. So a triangle of mortars at town hall eight. I've only got a tri I can only have a triangle of, of wizard towers, but town hall ten of course and town hall nine you get an extra one, so they can be in a square. Really look at the overlapping defense. Of these. So if you're an attacker, you're going to be attacked from both directions, which makes it much more effective. And it also makes it difficult for the attacker to decide. Because it's a symmetrical base, effectively, there's no real weak points in this base. Of course, there's no one area where it's particularly strong to design it in the most even way you possibly can. Now, I'm going to give you a bonus tip. This is a question I'm asked often when I'm doing base reviews etc for people use your upgrading defenses as lures there's no point in, in protecting them pop a couple of traps behind them thank you very much indeed for watching I'd love to know your thoughts bye for now